Hi, I'm Trudy Rice, President of the Fire Station Print Studio. We are a pivotal centre in supporting and encouraging artists and the local community, particularly in the print medium. As a non-profit facility, we rely on our membership, sponsors, artists and the goodwill of our volunteers. We are doing some great things this year, including some terrific exhibitions and workshops. Today I'm here in the studio with Bronwyn Rees, who has a solo exhibition starting called Old Marriage, and it opens on Saturday the 1st of June. Um, I'm just wondering if you could share a little bit about um, how you started your artistic interest. I started with a degree in illustration and I became interested in the printmaking. I did a little elective and then, you know, I became more and more interested. After I finished my degree, I went and did some workshops at the Toowoomba McGregor Summer School with people like uh, Vim DeVos and Basil Hall, who the printmaking community will know is an absolutely amazing teacher. And, and then I had a lot of success selling a whole lot of work. You know, you're not supposed to, that's not supposed to be your motivation, but it did push me in that direction. So I felt like in order to sell all this work, I had to attain a particular professional standard, which I managed to do mm. early on. And then uh, I became very involved in printmaking. The community was great. And um, although I worked by myself a lot in Queensland, uh, when I went to Scotland, I was part of the Glasgow Print Studio and enjoyed the feeling of an artistic community. And I came back to live in Melbourne and I became part of the fire station about wow. 10 years ago. Now, um, this is one of your works in your show behind yes. us here. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about this particular piece? Um, well, most of the work I've done in the last few years has been inspired by time spent in Queensland because I lived in Queensland for 20 years and I still refer back to the landscape over and over again. This particular piece was um, me staying at my sister's house. She had a, she's got a property in Nanango, and she had a caravan down the backyard where I was sleeping. That night, I watched this very terrifying film called Wolf Creek, and of course, I didn't get any sleep that night. I was ringing my husband up at two o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> and um, there's, there's dark, spooky things about country towns in Australia. And that particular place, my sister was a nurse and my brother was a policeman. So he encountered all sorts of things about the drug industry there because it's very depressed socioeconomically. And I just felt like, well, there's all these weird ur urban legends, weird happenings. You never think about it in, in the dark forest. And so in this particular picture, I added a spaceship. And what the spaceship was doing is picking up a cow, but you can't see the cow. Because I thought, well, you know, I'm sure people in spaceships love a bit of beef as, as much as the next person. <laughs> Bronwyn, I believe you use a lot of symbolism in your work, and particularly a metaphor of the lungfish. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Here's the shape of the lungfish. He's what they call a living fossil, because it's remained, the species has basically remained unchanged for either 65 or 100 million years. I'm not really sure how long. Um, he's part reptile, he's got great big scales, he's got fins that he can walk on that are like little arms and he has a single lung. So in times of extreme stress, which we get a lot of in the Australian um, environment, he can come to the surface and sip a lung full of air in very sludgy water. He has to stay in the water but he can get by on very low oxygen for a long, long, long time and they can live for anything up to 70 years, so they're very long-lived creatures. Wow. And I love the concept that there might be some things in the world that don't change because these days things like monogamy and being with one person your whole life until death do us part is a very unfashionable notion. And so I thought it's time we started, I started talking about it's okay, you know, it's these great beautiful things about being old. Look at trees and look at this fish, you know, it's very old and it's very amazing. I just love the earthiness of your work and I've seen you out in the car park <laughs> with your plates. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you go about making the work? Yeah, I mean, you might be able to notice in the mark making here, it's pretty, it's a great big, huge plate. So it meant that I had a lot of freedom of movement. The, this is the tool that I use. It's just a little hobby jewel type tool and I scratch into plastic. I actually use thinner plastic for that plate, but this is a demonstration plate of another one that I did. I had a lot of frustration and anger when I made this plate because I was looking, I was at home the whole time looking after a one and a half year old and I found that very difficult. And um, so I got out a lot of frustration by scratching and, you know, not, not just with the tool because that's a bit slower and more considered, but with sharp objects I just 
pull the sharp object all the way across the plate really fast so you'd have very spontaneous mark making because this is actually a uh, quarter of the plate was originally more like that size when wow. I first did it. Yes, you were, you, quite a few of your works are quite large, aren't they? Yeah, well, because I enjoy the freedom of throwing your whole body into the mark making. I also do things like I'll stand on the plate or whatever and I'll, I'll use it as a skateboard across the right. car park and gravel to get... Really I've seen this for real, so... ..get good scratchy marks. And um, I've heard of people running over things with cars. I haven't gone quite that far yet, but that might be something I could do in future mm. or putting them under steamrollers steam rollers or houses. I don't need to go quite that far. I do have a measure of control in what I do. <laughs> <laughs> How many works do you think you've got for your show? Uh, about 50, I think, all up. Um, I'm not sure how many, there's, there's 18 images at the printer, at, at those framers, sorry, and um, there's probably that many again that are going to hang up. I'm not 100% sure yet. We'll have to see how it all fits together. Well, thanks so much, Bromon, for taking the time to share a little bit about your artistic practice and your up-and-coming show, and very good luck for the opening. My pleasure. Thank you, Trudy. I've tried a lot of things in my life, and this is the one thing I've never, ever gotten sick of. Mm -hmm. You know, I just love it so much. I walk into a studio, I can smell the ink, and it's like an addiction. Oh, the smell of ink. Yeah.